In this video, we're going to talk about momentum. Now, when you hear the word momentum, what do you think of? Well, let's go over the formula first. Momentum is represented by the symbol lowercase p, and it's the product of the mass and the velocity of an object. So I like to think of momentum as mass in motion. Any object that's moving has momentum. Now, if you increase the mass of an object, the momentum will increase if the object is moving. And if you increase the velocity of an object, the momentum of that object will increase as well. Now, mass is a scale of quantity. Mass does not have direction. You can't say you have a 50 kilogram block east. Mass and direction are unrelated. However, velocity is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. You could say the car is moving 30 meters per second east. Momentum, like velocity, is a vector. Momentum has direction. Now let's focus on answering this question. How much momentum does a 15 kilogram block moving at a speed of 8 meters per second have? So momentum is just m times v. So we have a mass of 15 kilograms multiplied by a speed of 8 meters per second. So 15 times 8, this will give us a magnitude of 120 kilograms times meters per second. So that's the momentum. Now, let's say if we're given the velocity, let's say if it's 8 meters per second east, then the momentum will be east as well. The momentum is in the same direction as the velocity vector. So if the velocity is pointed north, the momentum is directed north as well. Now let's move on to number two. How fast is a 1.5 gram bullet moving if it has a momentum of 1.2 kilograms times meters per second? So let's use the same equation. So we have the momentum, it's 1.2. We have the mass, but it's not in kilograms. Rather, the mass is in grams. So we need to convert it to kilograms. One kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So therefore, we need to divide it by a thousand. 1.5 divided by a thousand, it's a very small number. It's 0 0.0015. So that's the mass of the bullet in kilograms. So now all we gotta do is calculate how fast it's moving. Let's solve for V. To do that, take 1.2 and divide it by 0 0.0015. So V is 800. So the bullet is moving at a speed of 800 meters per second. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the relationship between momentum and force. So we know that momentum is mass times velocity. Now what happens if we divide both sides by t? Now let's focus on the right side of the equation. We have velocity divided by time. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time. So the change in momentum over time is mass times the change in velocity over time. So we could therefore replace the change in velocity over time with acceleration. So delta p divided by t is equal to mass times acceleration. And based on Newton's second law, the net force is mass times acceleration. So therefore, the rate of change in momentum is equal to the net force of an object. And so thus you have the definition of a force. Now let's move on to our next problem. Number three, a force was applied to a five kilogram block to speed it up from rest to 20 meters per second in four seconds. What is the change in the momentum of the object? Whenever you apply a force to an object, you can cause the object to accelerate and thus increase the speed of the object. And whenever you change the speed of the object, you change its momentum. So a force can be used to change 
the momentum of an object. It can increase the momentum or decrease it. By now, you're used to calculating forces based on acceleration. But we're going to take the perspective of calculating force using momentum. So let's calculate the change in momentum. The change in momentum is mass times the change in velocity. So we have a 5 kilogram mass, and the final velocity is 20 meters per second. The initial velocity is 0 because it's sped up from rest. So 5 times 20 is 100. So the change in momentum is 100 kilograms times meters per second. And because the velocity is increasing, the change in momentum is positive. Now to calculate the force in part B, the average force, because the force may not be a constant force, the average force is going to be equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time, or the time difference from speeding up from rest to a speed of 20 meters per second, which is going to be 4. The change in momentum is 100, and the change in time is 4. So 100 divided by 4 is 25. Therefore, we can say that an average force of 25 newtons was exerted on this object. Now let's get the same answer using the old-fashioned way. So first, let's calculate the acceleration, which is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So acceleration is V final minus V initial divided by T. The final speed is 20, initial speed is 0, and the time difference is 4 seconds. So we have a change of speed of 20 meters per second divided by 4 seconds. So this will give us an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Now based on Newton's second law, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we have a mass of 5 kilograms and an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. So that will give us a force of 25 newtons. So you can find the answer both ways. You can calculate force by using this equation. It's the change in momentum divided by the change in time or mass times acceleration. Both ways work. Now let's try this problem. How much force is exerted by a hose that expels water at a rate of 15 kilograms per second at a speed of 30 meters per second? So let's say if this is the water hose and water shoots out at a speed of 30 meters per second. How can we calculate the force exerted by this outflow of water. And also, what does this number represent? So if we look at the unit kilograms per second, that tells us that we have the mass flow rate, delta m over delta t. Now to calculate the force, we know that force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. Now the momentum can change two ways. Either you change the mass or the speed. In this case, we're going to deal with the change in mass. So therefore, the force exerted by this fluid is equal to the mass flow rate, delta m divided by delta t, times the speed. So that's going to be 15 times 30. And 15 times 30 is 450 newtons. So this is the force that's exerted by this water if it's moving at this speed at a mass flow rate of 15 kilograms per second. Now let's work on this problem. A 10 kilogram ball moving at a speed of 6 meters per second strikes another 5 kilogram ball at rest with a contact time of 0.5 seconds. The 10 kilogram ball comes to a complete stop. What average force was exerted on the 10 kilogram ball? So let's say this is the 10 kilogram ball. And it's going to collide with a 5 kilogram ball. And the 10 kilogram ball is moving at a speed of 6 meters per second. The 5 kilogram ball is at rest. So once the 10 kilogram ball strikes the 5 kilogram ball, the 10 kilogram ball comes to a complete stop but the 5 kilogram ball moves to the right. 
Now, in order for the 10 kilogram ball to come to a complete stop, that means that if it's moving to the right and it stops, there must be a force that was exerted on the 10 kilogram ball that caused it to stop. And if the 5 kilogram ball is now moving to the right, there must be a force that caused that 5 kilogram ball to accelerate to the right. And based on Newton's third law of motion, these two forces are equal and opposite in direction. So let's calculate the average force exerted on the 10 kilogram ball. So force is equal to the change in momentum over time. So the change in momentum is mass times the change in speed divided by time. So we have a 10 kilogram mass. Now the 10 kilogram ball comes to rest, so the final speed is zero. And the initial speed is six, or the initial velocity. And it's positive six because it's moving to the right. So it's like minus and then positive six, which ends up being negative six. And the contact time is 0.5. So we have 10 times negative 6, which is negative 60, divided by 0.5. So that's negative 120. So the negative sign tells us that the force is opposite to the direction of the velocity. And so this force decelerated the object. Now, part B, what average force was exerted on a 5 kilogram ball? As we said earlier, based on Newton's third law, these two forces must be equal, but opposite in direction. So the force acting on the 5 kilogram ball is going to have the same magnitude, but the opposite science is going to be positive 120 newtons. So now we can calculate the change in momentum of the 5 kilogram ball. Initially, the momentum of it was 0. So to calculate the final momentum, we're going to use F is equal to delta P over delta T. So the force multiplied by the change in time is equal to the change in momentum. So we have a force of 120 newtons times the change in time of 0.5 seconds. So that's a change in momentum of 60. So if the initial momentum is 0, the final momentum has to be 60 because the change is 60. Now what is the initial momentum of the 10 kilogram ball? Well, momentum is mass times velocity. So 10 times 6 is 60. And then the final momentum of that 10 kilogram ball, because it comes to rest, the speed is 0, so the momentum is 0. So notice that the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So thus we have conservation of momentum. Anytime you have a force exerted on an object, it's going to change the momentum of that object. So this force decreases the momentum of the first ball, and this force increases the momentum of the second ball. Because these two forces are the same, and because they are exerted for the same amount of time on each ball, the change in momentum of each object will be the same, such that the total momentum of the whole system remains constant. So for any collision, momentum is always conserved. So when you really think about it, the purpose of a force is to transfer momentum from one object to another. So this force decreases the momentum of the 10 kilogram ball from 60 to 0. Now the second force takes that momentum and transfer it to the 5 kilogram ball, increasing its momentum from 0 to 60. So whenever you have a force, all it does is it transfers momentum from one object to another. So anytime you have a collision between two objects, when two objects collide, they exert forces on each other. And those forces transfer momenta from one object to another. And so that's it. So anytime a force is being exerted to an object, it's transferring momentum to that object. And the object that is striking the first object is losing momentum. So thus, momentum is always conserved for any collision.